All right, my little maniacs, we are here with Travis Eggity, the man behind Picture Plane, and of course his friend, DJ Dog Dick, right here on the show, <laughs> Drive-In Movie Maniacs. Welcome, my friends. How are you today? Great, great. Well, how are you? Happy to be here. Good, good, good. Now tell me a little bit about this witch house thing that you invented all these years ago. Are you uh, a bit uh, upset that you invented this term, or do you embrace the term witch house? Well, I'm not upset that I invented it. I feel like I didn't really have anything to do with it other than coming up with that word to describe music, I guess. One interview, whole, you, you said the, the word. Inter <laughs> like, the internet really, like, it sort of went viral, I guess, on its right. own. And it sort of, like, became its own thing, like, oh, very much away from me. Um, it became a worldwide uh, thing, and uh, yeah, it's pretty, very controversial it, in some places, if not. And I think just very influential to people. It's more just like a, I call it, it's maybe like a neo-goth kind of movement. Now, Internet goth, maybe. Do you feel that uh, Witch House maybe killed goth? Or do you Shit. feel that maybe it is the new goth? Maybe it's like a rebirth of some old things, but in a more contemporary context, I think. Like, um, like I said, more, more internet-based. I got you. A little bit more of a viral uh, internet-based sound. A lot of the like C-punk and a lot of those sounds. I've seen you uh, on some of those videos as well. The C-punk stuff. So a lot of these internet-based genres are big right now. Uh, how do you feel your style has changed since you started? Maybe um, more refined, I guess. I mean, uh, and I've started using some just like more dif different synthesizers. I don't know. I mean, I'm always trying to, to push myself forward and not to do the same thing twice, really. Sure. Always trying to evolve my well, you and experiment guess. and go to places I've never been before with my music. So. Now, is the the new album Tech Romancer? Uh, it's uh, it's very melodic and it sounds a, uh, electronic. It's a little bit like Skinny Puppy, but more melodic. Uh, we were talking about that earlier. Uh, is that okay with you? Sounding like that? Uh, this album you were was going definitely. For? really influenced by a lot of industrial music and sort of a lot of like heavy EBM and but also a lot of hip hop and stuff too. I kind of wanted to make the beats like some sort of industrial hip hop like minimal synth kind of fusion or something like that. Um, but yeah, so yeah, Melodic Skinny Puppy sounds good. Melodic Skinny Puppy, is, that sounds great to me. Now, of course, your uh, big track, uh, Gostar, got a lot of attention back in the day. It was a very, uh, I don't know, when I first heard it, it was very fresh, and the samples were chopped, and the beat would drop out, and I, I just thought, man, this is really an amazing track, and uh, it really kind of changed the face of the, the whole genre, did it not, a little bit, and got a lot of attention, and got covered. Goth Star was the first Witch House song. The very first? Yeah, it was. That's what, it was like a term I came up with to describe that song, along with a good friend of ours, this guy Shams. I feel like he was really the first true Witch House artist. I think Shams is really the only Witch House artist, actually. <laughs> he wouldn't like that, maybe, but uh, he has a song called Romantic Choking that's like about cutting your face while you're choking oh. someone or something. I, I hear Max over here saying, hmm, what do, you, what do you have to say about all that, Max? Oh, about Shams We're and just good Witch House, and yeah, he's, you know, a good old friend, and I, he would definitely, uh, <clears throat> he's very self-deprecating, and, he, <laughs> and that self-deprecation kind of, like, radiates around him, too, and he would, yeah, he, would, he hates to be associated with Witch House, although I think he also secretly delights it. Well, we came up can, with it together, him yeah. and I, and it was, uh... We're basically talking about house music that's like a cult based, you know, sort of like witchy house music. Oh, wait, you so know what? Like he like, house. but he set that like dead bird on fire. Uh, yeah, and that's Dan why Deacon I say he's a true that, yeah, he's witch like, house that's artist. That's the first like act of witch house, I think. Mm -hmm. Wow. His set at Wardscape. He did like a, nine, I think. Some dark ritual and, and lit a bird on fire at one of his shows and like had to clear out the whole room because it smelled like a dead bird. <laughs> <laughs> burning bird. Burning dead bird carcass. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. It didn't even like read that well. I don't think you could like tell what he was doing until like it just stayed. It's almost black metal in a yeah. way. Uh, it's kind of some mayhem sounding stuff there a little bit. Definitely. Uh, now, uh, 
I'm a big fan of the old Acid House from Belgium and stuff. Uh, was that a big influence on some of the stuff you've done as well? Are you a big fan of the old? Definitely. I, th I think rave culture in general, like especially the early rave stuff, like 90s hardcore and like jungle and just like the underground forms of dance music in the 90s were really influential when I sort of discovered those, like living in a warehouse in Denver, throwing raves and weird shit like that, I think that energy was, is really almost kind of central to what I do with Picture Plane, I think. Sure, and then the new album, Techromancer, is a bit, is that like uh, trying to speak to the dead through your music, uh, techno music? Uh, that word, the, the suffix of mancer, like the word necromancer, it's like someone that has like a, a magical ability with something. So necromancy is sort of like a magical control over the dead mm. like and technomancy with with like a, a magical relationship with technology basically i was wondering what you meant when you came up with yeah, the term it's like uh using technology for magical purposes somehow or having like a a magical control over technology do you consider yourself a, a magician of sorts yeah i think so especially when i'm playing music live it, I feel like technomancy feels like playing electronic music somehow. Like, I'm sure Max would agree. He builds a lot of synths and electronics, and it's like that's a form of techno. Anytime that you're creating, you're creating magic in a way. Yeah, true. Yes. So, uh, and your influence, of course, you the do it yourself punk rock style. A lot of people don't know that about you. You were influenced by that a lot. That's kind of one of your main influences, is it not? For sure. And I don't think. Do it yourself is strictly like just punk a rock. punk thing. Right. It's like you know that was a it's huge an artist part of, thing. Huge, yeah, exactly. Huge part of rave music and I don't know any underground culture. You have to build it up yourself. You know. Yes. So, yeah. Definitely. So, who are some of your like uh, favorite like uh, punk bands maybe that you were into? Well, I'm so, no. I'm putting you on the spot, right? <laughs> my my punk was more like discovering like noise music and like extreme music like that and and also I was a really big like underground rap nerd sure. like indie rap which was very DIY also like sure still is that was my punk rock in high school really was all this like weird abstract underground hip hop stuff in the late 90s early 2000s um, then I discovered bands like Wolf Eyes and Black Dice and Lightning Bolt and stuff in like 2004 or so and that was really like an epiphany, like it was like extreme, more like noise rock bands. Right. Kind of. You're all over the place, my friend. Yeah, yeah. You're influenced by everything, and, and uh, any artist should be, I guess, right? Yeah. So we talked a little bit earlier about the death of David Bowie, and uh, you know, you were influenced by David Bowie as, a, as an artist, as a visual artist. Um, did Bowie speak to you as a visual artist at all? I mean, now that he's gone. I guess so. I mean, his. His influence is so huge on so many different things that I don't, there's no way you could escape that. Sure. Um, I think to deny the, the influence of David Bowie is just wrong. Really. Well, so yeah. it, um, he didn't have like some huge personal influence on me necessarily, but um, I can deeply respect his overarching influence on just well, like you're a painter he was a painter i mean so i know you both could relate in an, in, in the artist way uh, you sure. were actually you trained uh, to be a you went to art school for quite a few years to become a painter did you i know? did yeah got a and you got out of de a degree in <laughs> painting and then did you no good <laughs> well i it actually did me I, I learned a lot in art school i'd recommend it if you it's something you're really passionate about or whatever but um yeah i think studying art helped my music out a lot right for sure or like learning about the art world and the history of art and yeah i think it it helped me quite a bit now max i don't want to not include you here now dj dog dick you know i've i've heard you be compared to everyone from weird al to the butthole surfers uh how do you uh feel that you're uh how do you feel i know you your approach is very whimsical and uh a bit different and uh, you don't run from that at all um how do you feel about being compared to those bands? Uh, well, it's Butthole cool. Servers cool. are definitely uh, appropriate. I don't know about Weird Al. I, I, I do a good goofy face on camera. <laughs> um, and I think when confronted with the idea of who I am, the persona, I think you there's kind of a, like a huh? Like, what, what's this? Is this a joke? You know? 
But if you if you were to watch like all my videos and listen to the music, you would he's you would not see a, a, a greater, parody artist, yeah. So. yeah. Right. There's a lot of uh, you know there's there's a big artistic world of content there that um, is what I do. He uh, you definitely have fun with it is a good way to put it, I guess. A little bit maybe. Uh, I would say it's like really fun sometimes but also really nightmarish right. also too. I mean, oh it can so be yeah like, it can be definitely very noisy and nightmarish that's no doubt there my friend mm -hmm. very very much like a uh, a rainbow in the dark sometimes <laughs> so uh okay now i got you both here let's talk about horror movies sure. what, what are some of your favorite horror movies that's what we oh, do shit. here of course so uh we need to talk about horror Oh man! What about what are some of yours? Well, I watched horror movies like constantly as a kid. I was allowed to watch whatever movie I wanted, and I had a um, I had my own uh, card to the video store that had like a I, somehow they just the guys knew to let me rent whatever I wanted. So I saw the original I Spit on Your Grave. I saw um, Make Them Die Slowly, which is also Cannibal Ferox, I think. Or, it's one. It's that. It's that really shocking. Uh, Cannibal Holocaust. Yeah, that one. The one that was like banned. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that one's a great movie. <laughs> um, yeah, back when like movies, their their title would change as distribution. Like, sure. yeah. It just depended on what country. I think sometimes you know where they released certain movies in certain countries, they change the titles for whatever reasons or you know copyright reasons and whatnot. Right. Uh, yeah, the scene in I Spit in Your Grave when the um, the bathtub scene. You know that one, where. Uh, she's like finally getting revenge on kind of like the main bully rapist and she's like giving him a ham job and that's the like, one that feels <laughs> good oh that feels real good oh and then there's this moment where he's like oh. and then you just see this like she rips fountain off of blood come up she cuts it off in the bath <laughs> in the Is hot that water this, and the then movie with like the really long rape scene yeah or something yeah. oh wow it's My, like a uh yeah it's a it's a like feminist exploitation you were talking about Troll too as one of your uh, yeah my, favorite some of my favorite movies. like horror movies are are I I'm a huge Troma fan I love oh like, we love Troma I love the Toxic Avenger oh and, yes um, they, all Troma movies I'm a huge fan um, I don't know if you necessarily call them horror but it's like I love the the use of this like artful gore and like it's it's funny but all, and the gore is really disgusting those movies are just like really over the top and i and very beautiful to me in this way they're it's super punk they're, they're hilarious right i love shit like that um like movies like street trash um have you ever seen that before i don't know have i seen it's a amazing movie made in greenpoint brooklyn in like 1986 and it's just like i haven't i'm gonna watch it now these, uh, just about homeless people that drink this alcohol that they find, and when they, whenever anyone drinks this alcohol, like their body just starts melting and like exploding. There's a ripped off dick seed in that movie too. Kind of like in your video, Hyper Real, a little bit. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, Street Trash was the main influence for Hyper Real. Well, uh, some of your videos are a bit horror-esque, and uh, the whole witch house movement is based in horror, I guess. I've always really wanted to make some sort of horror video or something, and. I guess I was trying to do that with Hyper Real, although it kind of came out more funny or something. The the girl uh, who is in Hyper Real video, one of the actresses, she is in this really amazing horror movie called Starry Eyes that um, I recently watched, and it's it's sick. I think that's on Netflix or something. I really recommend that movie. It's like brutal. There you go. Movies recommended by Picture Plane himself. All the, the little witch house kids all over the world are checking the internet right now. And uh, who knows what trend we're starting here. My goodness, this guy's a trend starter right here. For um, maybe more serious horror movies, I think uh, I really liked the, the Hills Have Eyes remake. Oh, yes. Really? Um, the remake? Yeah, it's that. sick. Like it, it, was that the one the Michael Berryman was, like was in? Uh, the it's, Hills Have Eyes? He was in one of those. I can't remember. It was the remake. He was in the original one, I think. The Michael Berryman. We 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 talked to him a few years ago. Wait, he's the uh, the big googly eyed yeah, guy, guy from Weird amazing. Science. Yeah, yeah, man. He's a great guy. Really nice guy. If you ever get a chance to meet him at a convention, really friendly, super friendly guy. So uh, what's next for uh, Picture Plane and the future? Uh, you got a new video you're going to be working on? I'm going to be working on a new video when I get back. Um, that I think is going to be kind of this sort of like cool BDSM kind of thing. I'm still working on that though. And then 
I don't know. I just put out a new album, basically, so I'm gonna do be doing some more touring this year, and I want to start recording more, just like working on a new album, I guess. Max and I have a side project that we do together called Dick Pick that I think we want to start doing some recording for that too. Now how did you and Max meet? Just through through music I guess over the years. Some mutual friends and stuff. How long have you two known each other? It's like 2008 or something. Yeah, 2008. So. How did you guys meet? Just on the road through music? Uh, yeah, we, uh, we would have been like, we were aware of each other before we met and then um, yeah, we, we we met at a show in Oberlin, Ohio, actually. Just became buds and decided to go on tour together, huh? Yeah, well, he's still... It was when we we both moved to New York around the same time, and uh, that's when it turned... We've played shows together all over the place, in Mexico and the Czech Republic. And sure. Like, you play down there with Rituals and all kinds of bands, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Those guys, yeah, he's great. There's some good Mexican rich house oh, out yeah. there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's some crazy Russian witch house going on too. Uh, yeah. We talked about that a little bit earlier. It's it's really serious over there, is it not? It's really dark. The Russians take everything dark and serious. Actually, right, they right. they love that shit. What do you feel uh, the future of witch house is? If it has I, one I at all. I have no idea. I don't know. I don't really consider myself a witch house artist. You know, it's more of, like I said, it was this thing that started just really beyond my control. Sure. I don't really even have anything. But you embrace you with that. I mean, yeah, I'm down with it because I like some of the music. Sure, actually, sure. I'm into it. So, who are some of your favorite witch house artists that you might uh, put out there? I don't know. I guess uh, <laughs> shout out to to Rituals in Mexico City. There we go. Um, yeah. Great band right there. Uh, was it ghetto ass witch? That's the thing. I don't even know many witch house artists. Like right. I don't know. Right. What is witch house? Right. Yeah, I have no idea. Yeah. How can you uh, put a label on anything, I guess, sometimes, you know? Yeah. It is what it is. All right, well, uh, how can fans keep up with you fellas? You got uh, web pages, Facebooks? Follow me on Twitter. On Twitter, that's where you, most of the action is, is on Twitter for uh, Picture Plane? Picture Plane. There you go. At Picture Plane. What about you, sir? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, DJ Dog Dick is at Ali Piss, Twitter. There you go. You can keep up with these guys on Twitter. You can catch them on tour and get all their music and watch their videos on YouTube. And, of course, watch a video here on Drive-In Movie Maniacs. Now you can get back to the movie. <laughs> get out of here. Go. Go. Yeah.
Manipulate your machine You're a technomancer